Good afternoon and welcome to More Than Meets the Eye. I am your host, Blind Prime, and for today we'll be going over the vehicle mode of Transformers Legacy Prime Universe Knockout. And I'm going to be comparing it to Cliff Jumper from Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise and Jazz here from Transformers Studio Series 86. So let's begin and talk about this guy and his stuff. Let's do a size comparison to begin off with. And uh, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button, share, and subscribe. You know, subscribe twice. Why not? Well, don't hit that button twice. But anyway, um, really goes a long way to helping me out on this channel, raising awareness for the blind. So we got this measurement right here. This measurement is a seven. So this guy is seven wide at his thinnest, and at his widest, he is eight studs wide. And sticking to the normal war for Cybertron vehicle stuff. You know, eight studs wide, that's not bad. And uh, comparison-wise, here is Jazz, and Jazz is seven studs wide at his thinnest, and eight studs wide at his widest. But Jazz is lengthwise, he is, let's see, what is that? Is that 16? Yeah, that's 16 studs long. Yeah, 16 studs long. And knockout here, lengthwise, is 16 studs long. They are both the same lengthwise. And they are both the same in, um, in width on both ends. As a comparison, where be my cliff jumper? Here be my cliff jumper. Cliff jumper here once again, is one, two, three, four, five studs wide at his widest, and that's it. Lengthwise, cliff jumper here is, boom, right, right there, and that is 11, 12. Cliff jumper is 12 studs long. So, we're done with the Lego pack, set it off to the side, and do a nice little comparison here with cliff jumper and the knockout. See, cliff jumper, we measure bumper to bumper. Cliff jumper's front bumper comes most of the way up the uh, wheel. Like, it covers almost all of that front wheel on the Prime Universe. Uh, knockout, just on the edge, is visible. And we can put cliff jumper on top of knockout, and we see that knockout. Cliff jumper covers basically the roof of knockout, but the windows that slant down to the wider doors are totally visible on either side of the cliff jumper. Completely. You know, that, those doors for sure are on the exterior of how Cliff Jump is. Another big comparison. Look at that. Look at how that works. It's like a monster truck in comparison. Cliff Jumper, you're such a tiny vehicle. Also, on a side note, I have been doing some math. I've been trying to figure out what is the scale of Transformers. And uh, it is one sixty-second scale from what I can glean. And this is from me taking robot modes and uh, dividing them by numbers until I get the, the appropriate measurements. But I just wanted you guys to know that. I believe it's 1 62nd scale. And uh, what was confusing me about LEGO is LEGO is actually two separate scales combined together. Because the LEGO men are wrong. Like the buildings and stuff are really on 1 62nd scale. But the LEGO people are wider than they should be, and so it was screwing up all of my measurements trying to do that. I had to actually dig into that, and I discovered that little note, that LEGO men are actually uh, horribly scaled for, um, you know, the LEGO minifigures horribly scaled for uh, a person. It's not right. It's not right at all. And that's what gives it its unique shape, is because it's... It, it's almost into that uh, that valley, the uncanny valley, but not quite. And they, they managed to do a good job. They, they get it on the cutesy end of the uncanny valley with the Lego minifigures. And um, I just wanted to share. Uh, I, I learned that a couple of days ago, and I've been waiting on figuring out when to share it, and hoping it would come up naturally in a video. And it did. There it goes. So we're going to remove the cliff jumper now, and we're going to talk about these two vehicles. Now, there are as different as you can get, even though they are the same length and they are the same width. Okay, that is conf that, that, that blows my mind. These guys are the same width. They are the same length. The differences are big and small at the same time. For one, even though they're at the same length, these uh, the back wheels on these guys don't line up. The back wheels for both of them are in different positions. Slightly, the back wheels for Prime Universe Knockout are a bit further back on the vehicle than the back wheels for Jazz. That's neat. Jazz also has this bit where it feels like, you know, goes in greatly in the middle, and then it, it spreads out a lot wider at the back end. Like, it does that, but, um, 
when you look at the knockout here, knockout accomplishes the same thing, but it uses uh, uh, gradients. It uses a gradient increase in uh, width to actually make it seem like it isn't that big of a jump when you get to these back wheels. Like, it feels a little more organic and less oomph like this one. This one just, these, these back wheels are massive. This guy feels like some sort of um, hot rod. And honestly, you know, it's, it's Jazz and he's a Porsche. And I don't remember a Porsche's back wheels being so wide. But then again, you know, I, have, I don't have any models of Porsche cars. So I can't tell you for sure if the back wheels are supposed to be as wide as these are. Uh, it works better with the... Uh, the uh, knockout and hey if any of you know which vehicle this is supposed to represent let me know um i couldn't get a clear answer on that one i wasn't sure what type of vehicle but i'm not sure if it's a porsche but it's a cool feeling vehicle that's for sure uh it, it's like it, it's a very car feeling car you even got these little grates on the back of the window i do always love those slats the back of the window slats they're always fun um so as vehicles go this guy is a, he's an excellent vehicle. He is perfectly in scale with the other stuff. Uh, Jazz's vehicle is definitely a different beast. And uh, I appreciate the fact that Jazz's uh, big old spoiler becomes a very nice heel in robot mode. Where Prime Universe Knockout here doesn't have a spoiler at all. His car is more like, you know, the executive's cool car to ride in. Uh, he doesn't have a spoiler. It's just a smooth ride and uh, can get you there quickly uh, with all the luxury inside. But it is annoying that they didn't give us sort of a flip-up mechanic here at the tail end of this to, uh, to increase the heel, because that's what makes this Jazz Mold work over the Knockout Mold, is the Knockout Mold doesn't have a big heel because they didn't do anything with this. They just left it a plain old car trunk, and they gave us no spoiler to add to stabilize the robot mode, which is a shame because that robot mode is quite excellent if it wasn't for how small the feet are. And, um, you know, they, they even did that with this, like these, these feet in the uh, knockout are folded up to be kind of vents on the back of the car. They, they don't make a lot of sense there. Uh, it would be, I don't know what they could have done with these feet, but uh, I think, I think they've, they've, they missed the mark slightly on the back of this vehicle. It's just slightly off. Uh, that, that weird cut in the center doesn't really make it work right, for me at least. Here, they managed to cover that up. There isn't a, you know, there's a, there is a, a cut there, but it's not as, it's not as wide and prevalent as it is in this uh, knockout mold. This cut in the back of knockout's like big enough to shove a blast effect into. Here, it's just a thin cut, like, you know, two different plastics merging together. And that's because uh, Jazz's feet are wider than Knockout's feet, and because of that, the Knockout feet don't cover enough of this area back here up. Now, we can take and see if any of these, uh, extra weapons, maybe, maybe there's some weapon storage to be found back there, but I don't, I, I doubt it. That's, that's the thing, there's, there's nothing back here. Um, you can't even really fit this weapon back there, it's just, it is kind of a shame. Now, um... That's the vehicle part of it. This vehicle is, uh, you know, it is a decent car. We, it has nothing really special to it. It's a very nice car. It's got some really great textures on the front. You get these cool engine vents on either side of that spot where the uh, the the head folds down into the uh, actual front of the car. The edges are, are are propped up a bit. This reminds me a bit of a Stingray in its feel on these sides and how these uh, edges of the hood pop up before you get to the wheels like the entire hood area is lower than where the wheels are actually yeah no it's about on the same level as the wheels and um, i really appreciate that i like that little bit and finally let's talk siege ports this thing actually has siege ports more than one it's got three that's it we got three siege ports here but you know that's that's not bad when we are dealing with jazz and his one but we could put the gun on top of him and uh Though, I like to put the gun off to the side, because why not? Why not go Mad Max Fury Road with this and put a gun on the side of the vehicle? You know, I, uh, putting guns on sides of vehicles is where it's at. Especially with this guy's gun. This guy's gun's kind of fun. Uh, I do like all the blast effects on it. And then you can put the, put the other thing right there on the 
in the gun. Yeah, like that. All right. Um, but yeah, guys, that is my review of the Knockout in its vehicle mode. It makes for one hell of a good vehicle mode. It is a decent uh, transformer all in all. Its transformation isn't that complicated, but neither is it simple. It's a, um, you know, it, it's on above average scale when it comes to transformation, and it's a fun transformation. It's a very intuitive transformation, and uh, everything kind of pops into place better in the uh, knockout mold than it does in the jazz mold. In the jazz mold, I'm always worried about breaking all this uh, clear plastic that they have going on here. And um, this one, even though they have clear plastic, because of the shape and changes they've made to the actual mold, there's less strain on these clear plastic pieces than there is in the jazz mold, which means that you have less chance of breakage or um, those, uh, well, I can't see them, but those stress lines that you can get in white plastic that make it look horrid. Uh, but thank you for watching, and please tune in next Prime. Next week we're going to have... Um, I managed during that Prime Day sale to find a Blitzwing on sale for $45. I wasn't about to pay the, the $55 that they were wanting for it, but, you know, $45 I thought was a decent rate for a, uh, a larger Voyager class product, um, Voyager scale product. Uh, and I have a lot of thoughts on Blitzwing and uh, its mixed bag of goodies. Uh, please tune in to my channel next week to observe the... Uh, the Blitzwing Quadrilogy, because there will be four videos on Blitzwing, a, uh, a More Than Meets the Eye on Blitzwing's tank mode, a More Than Meets the Eye on Blitzwing's aircraft mode, a More Than Meets the Eye on Blitzwing's robot mode, and of course, a Blind Formers to teach you how to transform all of Blitzwing. So that's going to be a fun day. I can't wait to do that week. It's going to be a big week for it, and we're going to be covering Stalker or Iron Man. Let me know if you want to know if you want to see the Alex Ross Iron Man or the new G.I. Joe Classified Stalker in the comments below. I would appreciate that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and please tune in next time where we got more goodies for you from a blind perspective. Bye-bye for now.